All right, good to see you. Okay, thank you. And live now here on C-SPAN, we are at the U.S. Institute of Peace for a discussion about Afghanistan. We'll be hearing from the Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation. You're watching live coverage on C-SPAN. Welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nancy Lindborg. I'm the president here at the U.S. Institute of Peace, and I'm delighted to welcome everybody here uh, for a very timely and a very important conversation with Ambassador Zalmay Khalizad on the prospects for peace in Afghanistan. I'd like to welcome everyone who's here with us today, as well as many of you who are watching online. And I'd like to invite you to follow us on social media with at USIP and use the hashtag of uh, hashtag AFG peace. That's hashtag AFG peace. Um, and I also encourage you to check out USIP's new podcast network at usip.org slash podcasts, it will include this event, uh, along with many other programs featuring leading voices on issues of peace and conflict. Um, USIP was founded in 1984 by the US Congress as an independent, nonpartisan, national institute uh, focused on preventing, mitigating, and resolving violent conflict around the world. And we work globally uh, with partners on the ground, working both from the bottom up and the top down um, with local, regional, and national actors. Um, we have been deeply involved with Afghanistan since 2002, and we've had an office in Kabul since 2008. And with the very capable leadership of our Vice President, Andrew Wilder, uh, and a wonderful Afghanistan team. The Afghanistan program works very closely with both U.S. and government partners, with civil society organizations, to address the underlying causes of stability and, and violence, um, including improving the rule of law and elections. And we seek to connect policy with action on the ground. Um, support to the Afghan peace process is a big priority for us, and we've mobilized to support both the Afghan and uh, U.S. actors to seize what is a very critical moment. I think as many, many people in this room know, the long-running Afghanistan conflict is extremely complicated with many, many stakeholders, both internally and externally, with conflicting interests and priorities. So inclusivity will be key, and especially including women, youth, and the many uh, many political factions will be vital to a sustained peace. So we're entering a pivotal time in Afghanistan's history, one that I think all of us hope could end uh, many, many decades of war and violence. Afghanistan, uh, Afghans themselves are war-weary, but they're also very nervous at losing the gains that they've realized uh, since 2001. Uh, Ambassador Halizad's recent efforts have opened new opportunities um, and created opportunities for moving ahead on a peace process. Uh, on January 29th, Ambassador Khalizad announced that U.S. officials and the Taliban had made progress towards a draft framework for peace after days of extensive negotiations. So today is a wonderful and important opportunity to hear directly about the process, where it stands, and the challenges ahead. Um, I think Ambassador Khalizad needs little introduction to most of you here in the room. Uh, he was appointed Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation by Secretary of State Pompeo uh, in September 2018. He comes to this challenge with extraordinary experience in the region, knowledge of the actors and of the issues. Um, previously, he served as the U.S. Perm Rep uh, to the United Nations from 2007 to 9, and he was also ambassador to, the Iraq, to Iraq and to Afghanistan, so he's exceptionally well qualified. We're delighted to host him for his first public remarks since becoming the special representative, and following his remarks, he'll be joined on stage by USIP board chair and former national security advisor Steve Hadley, who will moderate a conversation uh, with Ambassador Halizad. So both the presentation and the moderated discussion will focus on the latest developments, the challenges, and the opportunities in 
a very complicated uh, yet very hopeful Afghan peace process. Please join me in welcoming Ambassador Khalizad to the stage. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the help that I have received uh, from USIP uh, since I've taken on this uh, new responsibility. I will ask your forgiveness for my voice uh, today. Uh, this is what 42 hours of talking with the Taliban can do to you. <laughs> I took this job a few months ago to explore the possibility of peace in Afghanistan. This was done with the aim of uh, protecting our national security objectives in Afghanistan, uh, particularly the threat of terrorism, but also to preserve the gains that Afghanistan has made with the requirement uh, of uh, the U.S., which is to reduce the burden of Afghanistan on the United States as well. Uh, the opportunity we thought was there because the Taliban were indicating that they don't see a military solution to the Afghan problem. The Afghan government had uh, the, uh, declared an unconditional uh, offer to the Taliban for peace talks. Afghan groups around the country were de uh, demanding peace from civil society, from women's group, from regional groups. And President Trump had made it clear during his campaign that he wanted to try to end the Afghan war. to explore the opportunity, a potential opportunity, to see if a peace that can satisfy those conditions that I said at the beginning, I uh, started engaging uh, the various forces uh, in Afghanistan the, and to deal with a complex conflict that has lasted 40 years, to see what role we can play in the service of our national interest and in the service of ending uh, the war in Afghanistan. Uh, my overall goal is, at the direction of the President and the Secretary of State, not to seek a withdrawal agreement, but a peace agreement. Because a peace agreement can allow withdrawal, but it is not just a withdrawal agreement that we are seeking. To achieve a peace agreement, quite a number of issues have to be dealt with. We have tried to develop a long agenda of issues that must be addressed. Initially, we have focused on two issues. One on uh, the issue of counterterrorism, and the other uh, the issue of U.S. force withdrawal. After many uh, conversations, we have reached an agreement in principle with the Taliban on a framework that would provide guarantees and enforcement mechanism that no terrorist group, international terrorist group or individuals would be able to use Afghanistan, the areas that they control and should they be part of a future government against the United States, its allies and others. We will engage the Taliban further to flush out uh, these commitments that they have made. Similarly, we have agreed in principle on a framework for possible U.S. withdrawal as part of a package deal. We have a similar uh, engagement with the Afghan government. Our hope is, our expectation is that once inter-Afghan dialogue begins, which is our key objective, that these uh, parallel discussions will be brought together. But even if we achieve success on these two issues, uh, we make further progress, a peace agreement would not be uh, 
immediately or shortly or achieved in the foreseeable future without a comprehensive agreement on other issues. And as I've said publicly in my tweets before, nothing is agreed to until everything has been agreed to. And the other issues that must be dealt with are issues of a roadmap for Afghanistan's political future to end the Afghan war, Afghan, Afghan war. Uh, the Afghans must sit across the table with each other and come to an agreement about their future of their country. All sides tell me that I have talked to that they have learned lessons from the past, that previous governments that, whether it was a Taliban government or others that dominated Afghanistan, and imposed its unique vision by force on others have been a failure. So the time has come, they say, for an inclusive dialogue leading to an inclusive peace. Now that will not be easy, and we have offered to do what we can to be helpful if our help is needed. But it's for the Afghans to decide. It's for the Afghans to have the conversations. It's for the Afghans to negotiate with each other. It's for the Afghans to accept each other. And I hope what I hear from them would be, would be actually delivered on. I have been a witness to the tragedy of Afghanistan for a long time. Uh, and I share the aspiration that they have to overcome the tragedy of the last 40 years. And on behalf of the United States, I'm going to do everything I can to be helpful to them. But we cannot be a substitute for decisions that they must make. We will speak loudly and clearly for the values that we have. The values of human rights, value of freedom of the press, women's rights, all that we, 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 we stand for, and we'll make sure that they understand that for having a positive relations in the future with the United States, those values must be respected. Those values must be uh, responded to. And I know that the Afghanistan of today is very different than the Afghanistan of 19 years ago. Uh, it's a different country. And it will take time for the Taliban perhaps to appreciate that. But the message that they have given me is that they understand that they cannot go back. We do not trust the words of uh, any of the protagonists as such anywhere, but we will do what we can to facilitate it and be helpful and be watchful. Now, Afghanistan also has complexities uh, besides the domestic situation in the time of the elections where rather than uh, uh, coming together, it tends to polarize them. Uh, there are lessons to be learned from other uh, conflicts where protagonists who have refused to meet with each other have come together in a broader gathering involving the various forces that shape the future of that country. There are lessons that could be learned from that because at present, the biggest challenge that we face is for the Talibs and the Afghan government. Uh, the reluctance on, is on the side of the Talibs to sit with the government to negotiate the future. I'm hopeful and I'm dedicated to do what I can in the coming period to help overcome that challenge. Besides me uh, the, or the United States, the region has a big role to play in Afghanistan. The roots of the conflict in Afghanistan is not only in Afghanistan, but also in the broader region. I have said to the regional players that we seek their cooperation, uh, their participation, their facilitation uh, to assist the Afghans to come to the peace table and to make an honorable, just peace with each other. I have talked to all the neighbors of Afghanistan, perhaps with the exception of uh, one or two uh, that, uh, that you can guess. Uh, but uh, uh, we have not yet agreed on a formal framework for uh, regional participation. There is a, set, a, a number of regional initiatives that are out there. We look forward to coming to some understanding on the shape of a regional a uh, gathering that could facilitate and, uh, and participate in the finalization of the peace agreement. But we don't have to wait until then 
for regional players to play a positive role. They can already play a positive role. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, the timing of a peace settlement from our point of view is the sooner is better. I have said that although uh, uh, there is an election I know that makes the reaching a peace agreement particularly complicated, but it would be better for Afghanistan if we could get a peace agreement before the election, which is scheduled in July. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, while we would prefer to see an agreement before July, a peace agreement, to bring the Taliban also into the process so that that peace agreement uh, would uh, uh, facilitate a peaceful election or a peaceful uh, framework for proceeding with regard to the future of Afghanistan, but that if there is no progress on the uh, peace track, elections will take place, and we are doing what we can uh, to support uh, the preparations for, a, uh, for a credible elections. So let me conclude, because I look forward to the questions that uh, Steve will ask me, uh, that uh, uh, we are in the early stages of a protracted process to end the long suffering of the Afghan people, to protect our national security interests with regard to terrorism from Afghanistan at, the, uh, at much lower cost, to contribute through peace in Afghanistan to a change in the regional equation of South Central Asia where our relations could improve with Pakistan and other neighboring states as a result of peace, where Afghanistan, rather than being an impediment to regional integration, could be a place where the region comes together that, uh, that facilitates regional integration, that transforms this region, particularly Central Asia. But uh, while we are hopeful that there may be a moment of opportunity and we'll give it all that we can, we have a long way to go. What we've achieved so far is, is significant, but these are small, uh, two or three small steps in a long journey. So thank you for coming here today. I look forward to the questions. Uh, all the best to you. I want to thank you all for being with us today. Zal, thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, and your very informative, enlightening words, and thank you for undertaking this difficult assignment. I think you are the best possible positioned person to undertake this difficult task, and we're thankful that you've taken it on. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. I want to begin with uh, the issue of U.S. troop presence. Uh, the State of the Union Address appeared to link our troop presence to the peace process. The President said, as we make progress in these negotiations, we will be able to reduce our troop presence and focus on counterterrorism. Um, that suggests, in some sense, a peace process first, withdrawal later. And yet, at the same time, your discussions have begun with the issue of the prospects for withdrawal. Can you explain why it was important to start where you did in terms of these issues of troop presence and the terrorism issue? Oh, well, thank you, Steve. Uh, the reason for starting where we started has been that for us, from a, a national security perspective, although we have uh, quite a few other interests involved in Afghanistan, uh, that from a national security perspective, uh, terrorism and making sure that Afghanistan never again and becomes a platform for terrorists to attack the United States uh, uh, to have a repetition of 9-11. Uh, that's why we went to Afghanistan. Uh, that we wanted to uh, explore that, uh, uh, whether we could have assurances, arrangements, that that would be assured uh, as a result of the, a, a comprehensive peace agreement. We emphasize. Uh, from our perspective, that point of view. 
from the perspective of the Taliban, a perspective or a, a, a view uh, with regard to the troops uh, the, uh, was their most important issue, recognizing that there are a lot of other issues that must be discussed. And uh, uh, the reason for starting uh, with those two uh, uh, were the reason that I just described. But it has been clear uh, from the beginning that uh, we will start there, but there are other issues that must be dealt with, and uh, nothing is uh, agreed until everything is agreed to. And that uh, uh, now that we have made uh, progress on those two issues, uh, and we will flush these, uh, uh, those, uh, those, uh, the framework agreements that I mentioned on those, we are going to move to the other issues. Uh, so, uh, any any uh, judgment that the agreement is only made up of those two issues uh, 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 would be incorrect. I think the president's point of view, uh, uh, this statement obviously is extremely important. It uh, uh, helps us gain the kind of leverage that is needed to make progress on the issues of concern to us because some uh, in Afghanistan, and particularly among the Taliban, perhaps believe that we are going to leave anyway, and this, uh, this has, uh, which was a misunderstanding of the president's point of view, and I think the State of the Union address has clarified that. Good. I want to press you a little bit on that, because that is something that, uh, that is on a lot of people's minds. You said nothing is agreed to everything is agreed, but many perceive that the United States in general uh, is, uh, is weary of the Afghan project and that the president in particular sure. has wearied of the Afghan project. And uh, that at some point we will leave with or without a political settlement. Uh, uh, what, how do you answer that critique? And what assurance can you give that we are really, as you said, in it for the peace agreement which facilitates the withdrawal, not the withdrawal? Yeah. and peace agreement if possible? Well, no one should be surprised uh, that the president has stated clearly during the campaign that he wants to end these, what he calls, endless wars. Uh, uh, I think the American people know that. Uh, I think people around the world know that. But I think the president uh, uh, also would like Afghanistan to uh, not to become a threat uh, to the United States again, uh, uh, for it not to be a platform for terror, and that he's de determined to protect the U.S. national security interests, uh, regardless whether it, there is an agreement or if the Talibs do not agree, uh, and if they decide to go an alternative route. At this point, uh, uh, the policy is quite clear which is uh, that we uh, prefer a peace agreement. Uh, the Talibs say they prefer that too, uh, that uh, 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 they're willing to give us the assurances on, 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 on terrorism. That's uh, as a first step encouraging, but there is, as I said, a long way to go to get to a peace agreement. So uh, that's where we are at the present time. Let me ask you a related question. There's been a lot of discussion about a ceasefire, mm -hmm. and you have talked about the, uh, the issue of ceasefire and uh, inter, intra-Afghan discussion about peace are the, are the next items on the right. agenda, or certainly important I items on your agenda. Uh, clearly, the United States and the Afghan governments are pressing for a ceasefire at the front end of the process. <coughs> the Pal Taliban seem to envision this happening much later. At this point, what's realistic to expect, uh, given these divergent views and perspectives? Well, I think that the, um, uh, we would like both of those issues, the issue of uh, inter-Afghan dialogue and the uh, ceasefire to happen ASAP. Uh, and uh, for ceasefire, I've, uh, we believe that uh, given that the Talibs say there is no military solution, the Afghan government wants uh, is supporting uh, peace talks and achieving 
uh, an honorable peace unconditionally, uh, sitting with the Taliban without preconditions, the United States also is supportive of peace, then why should the killing go on? So, uh, uh, and uh, we've said uh, uh, a per permanent ceasefire uh, would be uh, desirable as soon as possible. The Talibs have resist this idea, uh, believing that a uh, permanent ceasefire would take away from them the only instrument they have to get concessions from the other side. So they, uh, uh, they uh, um, uh, are, are saying that the ceasefire, a permanent ceasefire, would uh, re reduce the incentive of the government uh, to uh, give them concessions and that uh, if uh, they do it for a while, for a long time, then getting their troops back into the field, there is, if there is no agreement, it will be hard for them. Uh, so there are people who are thinking about permutations of that, uh, but we are still uh, waiting to hear from them. When I talk with them, the last time the Talibs were saying they don't have the authorization to engage on that, perhaps they, they will down the road, but they have these concerns. On the inter-Afghan dialogue, I mentioned before um, uh, that this is election time and uh, uh, the Talib preference is not to sit with the government alone because they think that would give the government legitimacy and be favorable to the one of the candidates, the president, in his re-election campaign. And, uh, the, uh, there are indications that they would be willing to sit with the government in a multi-party uh, arrangement. Uh, we would like the uh, inter Afghan dialogue to start right away uh, because many issues of concern to the Afghans to begin with, but also to the rest of the world, it can only be dealt with in an inter-Afghan dialogue. The issues such as women's rights, the issues such as human rights, the issues such as freedom of the press, the gains that have been made, are all issues that uh, a roadmap for the political future, uh, for the future of Afghanistan would have to deal with. And, uh, the, and the Afghan society is very changed compared to 30 years ago. Uh, and the, the, it has to be an inclusive uh, conversation with an inclusive outcome that, that satisfies Afghans in their entirety and the great diversity that is now Afghanistan. You mentioned the election, and for those who may not know, the election is now, it's a presidential election scheduled for July 20th, I think. There are about 18 candidates who have registered, uh, many of them major political figures who have a stake in this peace process, some of whom went to Moscow for the dialogues with the Taliban. On the one hand, uh, some of us have thought that the prospects of the election could be a trigger or an incentive for reaching a peace agreement prior to the election so the Taliban might be able to participate in those elections. On the other hand, uh, election periods are pretty divisive, especially when you have 18 candidates or so, all uh, uh, vying for, uh, for uh, the, an opportunity to claim the mantle of peace candidate. How do you manage these, and how realistic is it to expect that the kind of complicated agreement you talked about could actually be concluded before July 20, or is there a possibility that there could be a down payment on that agreement in advance of July 20? How are you going to balance this? Well, this is one of the most complicated issues in the complexity that's Afghanistan. Uh, I have thought myself, and uh, we have, uh, as the United States, have been pressing uh, that the peace agreement, or uh, at least the peace uh, negotiations uh, among Afghans, the inter-Afghan dialogue, should start as soon as possible. It would be very good, very positive in terms of the prospects if there could be an agreement or lots of progress toward an agreement before the election. And that agreement or the prospects, uh, progress on the agreement could affect how the Afghans decide what to do about the future. If there was a roadmap, that roadmap, uh, uh, meaning peace agreement, uh, which has a political roadmap as a component of it, that would be dominant then, uh, what is agreed to. And, uh, 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 but I understand that, uh, you know, peace processes are not a straight line, there could be setbacks, uh, uh, 
uh, and uh, maybe there wouldn't be, perhaps I, 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 I hope to avoid that, but if there is a, an, uh, a stalemate in the peace process, then you can't hold back uh, elections in Afghanistan, so preparations for that election can go on. Uh, but uh, uh, I believe that, uh, that if we could, uh, and that's what I'm gonna work hard to achieve, makes uh, an agreement will be the best. Uh, and between now and July, there is, uh, there is sufficient time, I believe, where we could uh, reach an agreement. But at least if we have significant progress, that will have a good impact uh, with regard to the, to, the, to the future, including the elections. Uh, there are many concerns among, that have been expressed from Afghan women in civil society that this unfolding process has to them being, been a little exclusive and lacking some transparency. And what would you say to those who, who anticipate that, the, in some sense, the casualties of a peace agreement with the Taliban might be the progress that you talked about earlier, the progress of the expanded role for women, civil society, uh, the expansion of human and civil rights in Afghanistan. What do you, what do you say to them, and, and how can you address that concern uh, of these groups uh, sure. with the process that's unfolding? Sure. First, uh, I have to uh, assure them that as far as the United States is concerned, uh, we hear them loud and clear. Uh, we strongly believe in, uh, in our own values, uh, we strongly believe in standing up for those values, uh, which we believe are universal values, and we will uh, advocate for them. Now, as far as Afghanistan and Afghans are concerned, uh, they need to sit around the table, uh, and when I said sit around the table, I mean it has to be an inclusive round table, and, and, and that this new diversity of Afghanistan has to be reflected and that uh, um, they need to accept each other uh, based on equality uh, uh, and mutual accommodation. Uh, the most important uh, factor uh, among this, all the factors is ending the violence. Uh, Afghan children should be allowed, they should be able to go to school without fearing their moms and dads that uh, I might not see my son or daughter again. Uh, the uh, Afghans, I, I, I've interacted with them for a long time, they, and not surprising, they, they yearn for peace. 40 years of war is a, is a long time. And uh, that's, I, I think, comes to number one, to, to, as I understand. And together they have to find uh, a formula uh, in, in, uh, to preserve uh, the uh, achievements of the past, and uh, if we are asked to be in the room, uh, uh, while they talk with each other and uh, seek our help, we would, uh, we would uh, be more than happy to do that, to participate. Or others could, uh, they, if they request to participate, would participate to help them to come to an agreement where they, on the one hand, accept each other and agree on a roadmap, but also do it based on, 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 the, on, the, on the kind of achievements of the past. The Afghans have to understand, the Talibs, and I've tried to explain this to, and my interactions with them, which uh, you know, I said uh, 40 uh, plus hours, but it's actually much longer because only the last meeting alone was that long, uh, is that they want to be, uh, they say they want legitimacy, they have learned from their mistakes of the past, that they want uh, to be uh, uh, not uh, isolated, on, uh, be a pariah state, they, they say they need help, they will need economic help. Uh, they, they will need to uh, assistance in, t in many ways to stand on their own feet to address the many problems that, that uh, the areas, particularly that they are in, suffer from, and that that would not happen if Afghanistan went backwards rather than go forward. So uh, we have to be very. We can't trust anything that anyone says uh, that is protagonist. So we will have to have assurances, guarantees. Uh, but uh, but uh, that's the way I think about it, at least. There was a meeting in Moscow earlier this week uh, the, in which uh, uh, representatives or individuals from Afghanistan uh, met with 
the Taliban, the Afghan government was not present. And some of the statements uh, that came, that were at least reported in the press, were not particularly helpful or consistent with some of the things that that had been reported coming out of your talks. I, there, one of the Taliban spokesmen said that Afghanistan needed a new Islamic constitution. Uh, another spokesman said that the uh, U.S. withdrawal has to come first before we can. They are willing to talk about an intra-Afghan dialogue or a, a ceasefire. How are? How should we read? How do you read these kinds of? the stray voltage that seems to have come out of Moscow. Well, if there were no differences, there wouldn't be a war. I mean, we wouldn't have a peace process. So they, if they all agreed on everything, then the, uh, we wouldn't have the problems that they have. And that, the tragedy of the last 40 years for Afghanistan has been that uh, people, or that groups uh, with different ideologies about what the future should be like have sought to use uh, uh, military power, either by uh, carrying out the coup, taking the army over, and then using the government powers to enforce its vision on, 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 the, on the society. Uh, and uh, uh, that has been the tragedy, and that has led to a resistance, a rebellion, uh, armed resistance by others against uh, that imposition by one group of its vision on the rest. Well, Afghanistan needed a common vision that can uh, have the buy-in uh, and to get from money to one, as we say here, uh, is going to be a challenge. Uh, that, uh, but I am hopeful uh, because I think the suffering of the last 40 years has brought with it uh, a degree of wisdom in the leadership of various groups. And I'm hopeful that they will, uh, while the, the pre-peace that are this posturing in terms of emphases that different groups have, there are groups in Afghanistan that would never want us to leave, or at least not for the future. There are groups who say we have to leave immediately, and there are groups who want more uh, kind of Sharia, uh, and there are groups who want, uh, even they thought there was too much Sharia in this constitution, if I remember, we were being criticized as I had the honor of uh, working on the current constitution in Afghanistan. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, that's uh, it's understandable that there will be different perspective. The question is, how do you resolve differences? Differences are understandable. How do you resolve it if they can do agree to do it through a political process, through dialogue, through mutual accommodation, learning the lessons of the past uh, that would put Afghanistan on a better path? And I, that's what uh, this process is about, besides protecting our national interest. About one more question, and then we're going to go to the audience for questions to, between what time is left until 3 o'clock. Uh, there are microphones on the side. Do you want people to come to the microphones, or are you going to bring the microphones to the people? Great. So we thinking of your questions. We will have microphones. We'll pass to you. Once you get a microphone, please state your name, any affiliation and we'll try to answer your questions. My last one goes to the issue of Pakistan. Yes. Pakistan released Mullah Berader, a very revered leader of the Taliban. He has now been announced that he will join in some sense be your counterpart in the Doha discussions. Where do you think Pakistan is on this peace process issue? And indeed, I would say to you even, where are some of the countries in the region more generally? Yes. Uh, is Pakistan gonna be <clears throat> a help here and are there others that you think that have indicated so far that they're, they're prepared to support you in this effort? Right. Well, um, this is a sensitive question. I, I, I believe uh, uh, Pakistan uh, historically uh, uh, not played a positive role with regard to peace process, but I believe there is a, a positive change uh, in recent times. Uh, the release of Malaba Brother, which was my request, uh, they accommodated that uh, because Malaba Brother had the uh, reputation of being more, uh, more pro-peace. Uh, um, uh, President Karzai during his administration and President Ghani during his period had mentioned that uh, uh, Brother uh, would be uh, the, uh, a force for, for peace. 
and uh, Pakistan has tried to, uh, to uh, facilitate uh, talks between the Taliban and uh, the United States and also favors uh, 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 inter-Afghan dialogue, including between the Taliban and the government. That's the, uh, that, and I think that's positive. Uh, we always would like uh, Pakistan, like other countries, to do more, uh, but uh, we appreciate what they have done so far. And I have indicated, uh, and Secretary Pompeo and uh, the President, that uh, you know we want to have good relations with Pakistan, better relations with Pakistan, and that uh, sh uh, uh, what they do on Afghanistan to facilitate peace and reconciliation which has been a burden on the relationship uh, that will be removed, and, and Pakistan is an important country with which we want to have better relations. Questions? Uh, we have a few. Sir, right here. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir, for, uh, uh, for coming here. I'm Sadiq from Afghanistan, working for the government. I have a question in regards to the Moscow efforts on peace process. Do you think, sir, it's a complement to your process or they are pursuing a strategy based on their terms to bring peace in Afghanistan? And, uh, and of course, it could also uh, make it hard uh, for your process to uh, actually see and get more concession. Uh, so the Taliban will not easily concede if they see that there's another country, a powerful country, they are supporting them or they are dragging the, the process. Um, that was my question, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's a distinguished member of the Ministry of Interior of Afghanistan. <laughs> he didn't introduce himself properly. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. You've been outed. Yeah. So, well, do you want me to respond? Uh, or do you want to take... Let's take a couple. Okay. Let's, let's uh, take a couple here. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, my question is that you are doing all this meeting and conversation with all parties. Is the government involved with it at all? Mm -hmm. Do you get any help from them or do you explain to them what's going on or it's behind the back door? And the other question is one of the agreement the Taliban did that the girls can go to school. What do they mean by that? It's going to be... Uh, Madrasa again, that the girl can go just study what they want because they want um, Islamic government. We'll take one more, Zal, if that's all right, and then you can answer those three, and we'll try to do them in groups of three. Uh, yes, sir, back there. Uh, Dave Ottaway from the Woodrow Wilson Center and former Washington Post. Uh, we know each other very well. Um, I was struck in the president's speech, he talked about the reduction of American troops. You're talking that your, your discussions about with the withdrawal. Is the term reduction used, do you think, because there's some hope that there might be, remain a residual American force in Afghanistan as part of this deal? Oh, well, first on Moscow, uh, uh, we will have to wait and see what impact uh, it has. If it uh, leads to uh, Afghans coming together, including the government, uh, to a meeting uh, next in Doha, as they've agreed, to, then the Moscow meeting as a step in that direction would have been positive. But on the other hand, if it polarizes the Afghans further, uh, then uh, uh, the judgment would have to be different. So uh, at this point, I, I'm in a wait-and-see mode uh, on, uh, on the Moscow meeting. With regard to interactions uh, with the Afghan government closed doors, yes, I do brief uh, the Afghan government uh, on my discussions. They are also behind closed doors, but uh, I, I, I do brief them. I tend, uh, generally tend to go to Af Kabul first to tell the president and the leadership uh, what I'm going to do on, on, on the rest of my trip, and then I tr try to go back at the end of the consultations to Kabul to brief uh, w what it is uh, that we have achieved. Uh, I'd like uh, 
the inter-Afghan dialogue to begin uh, quickly, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, that will be the best way because many issues and that are really Afghan uh, issues, uh, I'm not dealing with them. Uh, I'm not discussing the future, uh, negotiating the future government uh, of Afghanistan. Afghans must agree with each other. Our role is going to decline. Uh, uh, the role of Afghans uh, will increase. They need to take more ownership. Uh, they are better prepared, uh, I have to say, than uh, they were after 9-11 when we went there to take more responsibility and leadership themselves. Similarly, the role of the region would increase. The region needs to rise to the occasion to play a positive role because they will uh, uh, benefit from a peace agreement in Afghanistan, in my view, and uh, uh, the opposite will be the case uh, in case uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, the uh, question with regard to uh, uh, withdrawal versus reduction, well, you can't have a withdrawal without a reduction. So I think this is, uh, 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 we, this is something we have to, in, or in the middle of the negotiations. As I said, some Afghans would like us never to leave, some Afghans, uh, and to have a large presence. Some Afghans would not, not uh, uh, like us uh, to stay there at all. I have said, it's our policy, we're not seeking permanent bases in Afghanistan, uh, that uh, our presence is, is condition-based, our withdrawal is condition-based, uh, and uh, uh, our vision long-term is for an Afghanistan that's uh, entirely sovereign, independent, and that, uh, and if, if they decide that they don't want to have foreign troops, we don't want to stay where we are not wanted, provided that there is no threat to our national security from Afghanistan, that uh, Afga you know there are no terrorist uh, threats to Afghan uh, from Afghanistan to the United States. That is a, a red line, and I think the, uh, the, that's the policy of the president as well. Let's take uh, three more questions. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am, right there. Uh, my name is Sita Kuhi, and I'm with the School of International Services at AU. My question is, during the peace process or the peace negotiation, were there any talks about drug issues with the Taliban? What, what issues? Drug. Drug issues, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Abdul. I'm a graduate student at the George Washington University and working with non uh, Rise to Peace nonprofit organization. My question is regarding Taliban commitment uh, to prevent Afghanistan from becoming safe haven uh, by any other transnational terrorist group. So, uh, speaking uh, in particular, like ISIS, uh, Khorasan province branch, branch they, they uh, burned on Afghanistan in 2015. They had many attacks. They claimed, they, unfortunately, that they had, those attacks had um, uh, massive casualties. But their ideology is much different than Taliban, especially their attack were particular on particular sectarian group, like Shia group. So being practical, how much Taliban can be influential, even uh, working with Afghan government to prevent these other okay. uh, transnational terrorist groups? Thank you so much. Thank you. Did you have a question right here? Yes, ma'am. Hi, uh, Amy McKinnon from Foreign Policy. Um, do you have any concerns about Moscow's apparent desire to involve itself in the peace process and any role that they may play in a post-peace agreement in Afghanistan? Well, on drugs, not yet. We, that we have, and that will be part of the discussions uh, once the inter-Afghan dialogue begins. On uh, ISIS, uh, terrorism, uh, we will not just rely on people's words. Uh, 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 the, there would have to be enforcement mechanisms for uh, the United States to be able to, uh, to uh, have confidence that uh, the commitments that are made, which it's, it's a good step uh, that these commitments are made, commitments with regard to groups that in the past those commitments had not been made. I regard that as positive. 
but uh, words are not enough when it comes to the national security uh, of the American people, so therefore there will have to be enforcement mechanisms agreed to in which we would have confidence. And uh, with regard to uh, Moscow, uh, uh, Russia's role, uh, we welcome uh, a positive Russian role that facilitates uh, reconciliation, that facilitates uh, a peace settlement, that facilitates inter-Afghan dialogue. I have said repeatedly to uh, counterparts around the world that I'm not seeking to monopolize the diplomacy of peace. Uh, I know I represent the United States. Uh, we have interests, we have values uh, that we stand for, but we want a peace agreement uh, in Afghanistan. We want to see the war end. We want to see the war end this year. Let's declare this year the year of peace in Afghanistan. Anyone that would like to help is welcome. Uh, we'll give them all the credit they deserve. Uh, so I am, uh, I'm, I'm not looking at it to exclude anyone who wants to play a positive role, uh, but we'll thank any, everyone who will play a positive role and, and, and give them the credit they deserve. Let's, uh, we have enough time for three more questions if they're brief and if the answers are typically so I'll call us uh, brief. Um, sir. Thanks so much. I was really hoping you'd pick me. Um, uh, my name is Zafar Azam and I'm from George Mason University. And for the longest time, whether it's from European Union, Indian government, even the Pakistanis, what I've heard that that they would support an Afghan-led, Afghan-owned process. Yeah. But what I'm hearing is the inter-Afghan dialogue is to come. Where are the Afghans in this process? Because they should be leading it, they should be starting it, but I feel like this is being imposed on them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Khalizat. My question is regarding about the uh, women and Taliban, uh, as I know, is a big challenge between Taliban and Afghan. What do you think about the situation in women in Afghanistan? Because they give, when I heard they give women some limited job, as what do you think about the future? And also the second uh, question is, uh, what do you think about the result in your hard work? And when you did a hard work, what do you think about the result? Thank you. Last question here. Thank you so much. Here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sahib. Uh, my name is Nisar, and I'm a, a CEO of an NGO called Global Peace One Week. And my question is uh, specifically regarding Pakistan. Is Pakistan compensated in any form? to bring Taliban to the table? Uh, I didn't understand the last part, sorry. Pakistan able to bring the Taliban to the table? Yeah, sure, bring him to the table. Sorry, compensated for bringing them to the table. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, first, uh, with regard to Afghan, uh, owned Afghan lad, uh, we very much would like that, uh, but uh, uh, the, the, there is a need for a formula for the Afghan on an Afghan process to really take place. Uh, we are playing a, a transitional role to facilitate to, uh, to the phase which we the decisive phase for peace in Afghanistan, which is the Afghans sitting across from each other. Uh, I'm a catalyst. I see myself and others who are trying to do something to get to that because Afghans are not agreeing among themselves at this point to sit across the table and negotiate that. Uh, two, as to my hard work, thank you for what you said. I think I have a lot more work to do. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the other issue with regard to women, I think women have made progress in Afghanistan. I'm very proud myself uh, of the role that we have played uh, and, uh, representing the United States when I was in Afghanistan, you know, whether it was with the Constitution or other uh, steps that were taken that now we see, uh, you know, women uh, in all walks of life uh, in Afghanistan, you go to offices, you see women, uh, um, a lot more education, uh, a lot more, uh, you know, presence in the media, what have you. It's a different world. 
uh, than uh, you know, 18, 19 years ago, and they need to be built on. Afghanistan still has a long way to go. Let's not uh, cel uh, celebrate as if we've Afghanistan women have achieved where they are. The Talibs have a different view on this issue. Uh, they say they, have, they made a mistake in how they dealt with women the last time. And they, uh, but nevertheless, uh, they are not going to be the government of Afghanistan. They are going to be part of the political process of Afghanistan. They may be a part of a power sharing arrangement in Afghanistan. So it also depends not only on us pressing them, but all the other Afghans who will talk with them. Uh, other Afghans who will uh, negotiate with them, all the other Afghans that might join uh, forces with them to form the government, that they stand up for their values uh, and to come to some mutual respect and mutual accommodation. Uh, th this is largely an Afghan issue. We have our role uh, and we'll play our role, but uh, what encourages me uh, that there is uh, uh, an understanding that one side imposing its will on others by force is a formula that has led to disaster in Afghanistan, and I hope uh, that uh, that remains the case. Compensation uh, for Pakistan. Yes. Well, I have said what I uh, said before. There is no compensation uh, other than, uh, than better relations. We want to have better relations with Pakistan, and some of you who have known me over the years uh, uh, and my uh, views on this issue uh, you might be surprised that Pakistan is an important country. As that we've done big things with Pakistan in the past. Uh, we've, uh, uh, and we'd like to get into a better situation uh, in terms of relations with Pakistan. And the Afghan uh, conflict uh, and the fact of, uh, of, of uh, the role that Pakistan has played in terms of its relationship with the Taliban and this, uh, the Khani network and others has been a burden on this relationship. They say they want peace. We welcome that. Uh, we want uh, them to, to play a positive role. Most of the meetings we have had with the Taliban have not been in Pakistan. They have been in other countries. So, uh, and uh, there, 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 I think the message that I uh, have here is, uh, peace in Afghanistan will help our relations with Pakistan. Peace in Afghanistan will help Afghan-Pakistan relations. Peace in Afghanistan will help regional connectivity. Pakistan will be a beneficiary of that. Uh, and, 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 and let's seize this opportunity, this moment uh, for the region, uh, for Afghanistan, especially for the obviously long-suffering people of Afghanistan. That's an opportunity as the United States as a leading uh, power, which has had a, a extensive uh, in, engagement now with Afghanistan to leave a good legacy behind and to have a, a, a good productive relationship with that region for, 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 for the future. We are out of time. I want to thank you.